It's one of my all-time favorite games. And, and uh, Lego Star Wars. I love Lego oh, Star Wars. Oh. The, yeah, that, I, I must have played through that from beginning to end so many times, like, Sometimes by myself, you know, one time by myself, one time with one of my daughters, you know, we just like different, different uh, configurations. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're right, yeah, they're, they're right, they're right up my alley as far as that goes, yeah, it's definitely. I, I, I have that and I have played the Indiana Jones one and it's good too. Um, I think I like the Star Wars one, but maybe I just spent more time on it, you know, so. All right, this is not what we're going to do today, but, but it could be, all right, but I, I don't think that would be the best use of our time. Um, what I want to do today is different people are at different points on different assignments, and I want to make sure I go over the stuff that is confusing, and I don't care how simple or complicated you think it is. If you have questions, let's discuss them now. Now, I'll spend as much class time as possible discussing questions, going over examples, trying my best to, to get those resolved. And again, and if uh, anything needs to be talked about like on a one-to-one -one basis, like we can do that after class during the lab time. So, yeah, exactly. Does anyone have any questions to start? Android is not what you thought it to be. That very well may be, but that's not a question. I mean, I can go over something, but I, I have the feeling and I have the sense that I don't want to overwhelm by going over too much stuff and, and would rather, yes, go ahead. Oh, uh, what? Broad spectrum. Okay. In Slate, uh, something else we just went over, there seems to be a lot of things you just copy paste because it works. Okay. How do we know when we need to? I, I'm not sure I really understand the question. The question in general terms is there's... Like the Slate standard, it says it's just... Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. Well, okay. That's that's a good question. How would you go and uh, let, let's say if you didn't know, if you didn't remember to look up inflating or, so, or something like that, um, how would you know what to do? And, and yeah, and problem solving. Um, I would say, first of all, that, that every single developer, there's like different levels of understanding, all right? Um, you know, when I get, and when I work with very beginning programmers, you know, some of the most basic things seems to them to be magic and and therefore they will write you know each statement is like that it's like well to add two numbers this is what you do okay I'm going to copy and paste that and they may not even understand exactly how it works or whatever but um, they do it so every developer has sort of levels of understanding and, and what I think is a valuable skill, and again, and, and this, is, this is my take on it, what I think of is a valuable skill is to be able to know the detail to which you do need to understand something to make it work versus feeling the need to understand everything in minute detail. All right? Now, so for example, that inflating, uh, thing. Um, I look at it and, you know, I have an idea of what it does, but could I spout it off the top of my head? No, I couldn't. All right. I know what it does, and um, it, so in that case, what I would say would be useful is 
understanding the purpose of it. Because if you understand the purpose of it, then you know when to employ it. All right. Um, so the purpose, for example, of inflating, which is a, a good one to go over, is largely to make a dynamic GUI. In other words, to add stuff to your GUI. All right. Um, and therefore, if there's ever, as opposed to changing stuff in your GUI, the first so many assignments that we had, we defined everything in the GUI in the XML, and then went and um, just manipulated it. We'd get the value of it, would set a, a text value, would would get a text value, and so on. We know that if to add something to the GUI is a different sort of challenge. Um, and therefore, if you remember that, the inflating bit deals with dynamically adding elements to the GUI, then that's, um, then that's um, um, the important thing. Now, if you, did, if you forgot that altogether, you forgot that it was called inflating, for example, and you weren't really sure, like, you, you, would, you, you wouldn't know to look up the inflator because you forget that it's called inflating or, or whatever. Um, you still should have a sense of what your end goal is. All right? In other words, no one goes and says, I need to use this inflator because I need to use an inflator here. People go and say, I need to use an inflator because I have two pictures on the screen, I want to add a third. All right? I have two cards on the screen, I want to add a third. And what are you doing again? Dynamically, dynamically is a good word to use in search results because what that relates to is changing something. You know, things are, things are typically described either as being static or dynamic. Static things stay put. Dynamic things change. So if you talk about a GUI that, whose structure doesn't change, that's static. But if you talk about a GUI whose structure changes, that's dynamic. So dynamic is a good search term to use. And it would be good to use, for example, even if you're looking at web pages. How do I make a database-driven web page? What does a database-driven web page mean? It means a page that changes when circumstances change. In other words, a dynamic page. So dynamic is one of them good words to drop into search engines when you're looking for it, if that's what you're looking for. The other good one to look for, if you are looking for it, is to programmatically do something. All right? Programmatically add image to GUI. All right? Let's try both of those and we'll see if those search results work. Let's see if, if, if I'm on the mark here if I'm just blowing smoke. Right. Well, well, that's. Uh, I mean, that's the the that, that's the Bible of Android development. That has that's the definitive guide uh, for it. So I'm um, I'm googling programmatically add to GUI Android and Android programmatically add UI elements to a view. Creating GUI programmatically at runtime and so on and so forth. It, it, it is. It is. And it's, it's also the thing that you have to realize um, with sites like this is that the quality of the answers that you get might vary. All right? Um, not to mention the fact that there's a lot of people that think they know more than they do. And there's a lot of people that are arrogant about what they know. And they may even know a lot, but in my mind, there's no, there's no reason to be... Um, to be arrogant. Right. 
Right, right. So again, so, so, so it is a site like this that is really, you don't know if the person posting it is, you know, John Android, the inventor of the Android platform, or some bright 13-year-old kid that did a little bit, you know, um, playing around on his own. So um, you do have to take the results with a grain of salt. Yes? No. No. Any other no. Um, it's just a matter of time. Uh, I have in the past, yeah, I would say I, I have in the past uh, contributed to some things, but just now um, I don't really have the time to do that. Now they're showing a slightly different way to do it. They're showing adding something without doing an inflate. So they are simply creating the view programmatically all through code with no XML. All right. Which is possible to do. They use a parameters class here to set the parameters programmatically. Whereas usually um, that's the kind of stuff that would be in the XML. But you wouldn't have to use inflating to do that. Um, the, what the inflating provides is the ability to define all the attributes to an element in XML and then just say, I want to make one of these. As opposed to having to go in through your code and set a bunch of stuff. So. Yeah, frag fragments are something that you can you can use as well. And fragments, what that does is that sort of elevates the concept to say that we might have a chunk of something that's going to appear in several different views. So that's sort of a sort of a next next um, step that we can we can take a bunch of stuff and then reuse it in in several views as opposed to um, coding something specific for it. Um, at any rate, I mean, that's a good question, what you raised. Um, I, I put in programmatically, let's try dynamic now. Dynamic UI, Android, fragments, fragments, how to create. If you're a beginner, you can try this. talks about the adapter that we're using with the list view. can build a custom layout, yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, here shows uh, creating it via the inflate. So the first page of results for dynamic contained I'm not mistaken. This is the first or second page. First page 
showed um, how to do um, that using inflate. So that's not, that's not too bad um, as far as, and there's more over here on the second page, and then so on. One of the things, one of the ideas, again, is that, and one of the things I stress is try to focus on the concepts and the details then being something that you can look up. It's harder to look up concepts than to get details questions. So if you had no idea that that is called inflating, let's say, that's a harder answer to get that what you're doing is called inflating than if you know I want to inflate a layout, how do I do it? So therefore, if anything, understand the concept and the concept will allow you to better search and better get answers to the detailed questions that you have as opposed to if you don't know the concept and that's why I kind of stress and, and, and sometimes go light on the details because the details you could always refer back to another example that you did or um, whatever. A another good thing to do is, is, and you could do it more or less formally, is just know what projects you've done certain things on. All right? So for example, you know, what is a project that we, um, what is a project that we did inflation on? Well, pardon me? Rock, paper, scissors. Uh, the example in class is the Twitter example. Um, the other example is the blackjack one. We did, who did that? Pardon me? Oh, you're bitter about the Twitter example? Okay. Right, right. Okay, fair enough. All right. Right. Um, so again, you know, I don't have a, you know, you, you said this was a, a broad scope question. I guess my answer is going to fit that then. It's sort of a broad scope answer. And the best thing you can do is if you understand the concepts, then it's easier to get the details than if you're just totally 100% don't know what to do. So um, there's a lot going on in Android. There absolutely is with all these things. Uh, again, keep in mind the environment that you're in and what the framework is providing that, um, that you just need to tap into that you don't have to worry about writing yourself. Other questions, either specific or general, like that one. This. Okay, that's a good question. This is fairly consistent across programming languages. All right. Um, so you, you will see code like this even in JavaScript. All right. Um, you will see code like this um, certainly in C Sharp and uh, in Java and in Android. This simply means whatever object this code lives on, that's the object that we're using here. So if I have an activity, All right, and I have all the methods in the activity and I say, I have a method that says calculate answer. And I say somewhere in the code this calculate answer. What that means is Call the calculate answer method on this very object. 
So it will call the calculate answer method. Now you don't have to do that with methods. You don't have to prefix them with this. But if you did, that's what it would do. Now, what we have typically used that for is when we're setting the, um, the listeners. All right? So, if I have my activity, extends activity, so it is an activity, and then I say implements, on click listener or is it on button click listener I forget but anyhow on click listener I might do something like button B equals button find view by ID and then supply the ID. Then what I do is I'll do B dot set on click listener this. So that's the one time we've probably used it most in this class is setting the um, activity listener or the listener uh, on, on, on uh, um, a, a view. What that means is First of all, it goes hand in hand with that implements. When I say this implements on click listener, that means, all right, that this object, in addition to being an activity, which it is, right, that's what this part means, in addition to being an activity, it can serve the role of an on click listener. That's what implements on click listener means. It means that you can use this wherever you have defined an on click listener. So whatever needs an on click listener you can use this particular class for. So when I say, when I find a button on the screen and I say this for set on click listener, what that is saying is, is this very object contains the code that's going to get processed when this button gets clicked. So that's where it is. It's not in some other class. It's in this activity ABC class. And sure enough, we would need to have an on click method. Let me pull up an actual example. This was my tip calculator example. My activity extends activity and implements view on click listener. What that means is this activity, in addition to being an activity, can be used anywhere that needs an on click listener. So here, I define my button. I find my button in the GUI. And then I say, set the on click listener to this. Now, in order to do that, I have to really have implemented view on click listener. What does that mean? It means that whatever methods are defined in the interface on click listener, I need here. 
And there's one method that's defined in the on-click listener, and that is on-click. So this class itself contains both a create and it contains an on-click event, or an on-click uh, method. And because it contains an on-click method, I can use it. I can implement the on-click listener interface, and then I can plug in. This very object itself serves as that button's on-click listener. Another way to put it is this very object itself, the activity, contains the code that occurs when the button gets clicked. So it contains the on-click method for that particular button. Yes? Yes? Correct. How would you do that? All right. How could I differentiate what got clicked? Um, let's look at. Well, let's look at the. Let's look at the tic tac toe example. Because. And they're not mutually exclusive. In other words, I could create an inner class and use that for three buttons on click listener. All right, I could use the same on click listener object for three buttons. All right, so it's not just when you implement the interface and say this that you can do that. So those two things aren't, aren't mutually exclusive. The other way is with an anonymous class. All right? An anonymous class is a class that doesn't have a name. All right? So, well, both anonymous and inner classes are inner classes. All right? Um, one of them just literally doesn't have a name. So let's open tic-tac-toe. I found out why this does not always win. I only took the optimizing like two moves in. There, again, there's, a, there's at most five moves in tic-tac-toe if you go first, right? I coded the first, I optimized the first move, I optimized the second move, the third and four, fourth move I let be random. And then the fifth move, move well there's only one move left because there's only one square left. All right, here's how we do it here. Now remember, this is, this is how this particular example is done. In another example, we might treat it a different way. Vo public void on click view on click and then the argument is view v. What is view v in that statement? Right. It, well, in, in more generic terms, that view is the view that got clicked. Alright. So, in this case, I have I initialized, when I initialized the board, somewhere way up here, every cell I set the on-click listener to this. So I have that in a loop, a three by three loop. So it loops through the columns and it loops through the rows. So when I'm done, I have done this nine times and I've set all nine cells to have an on-click listener of this. All right. 
We know because I said an on-click listener this, that this activity must implement on-click listener. Otherwise, I would not be able to do this statement right here. I could have nine, nine, nine on-click listeners instead, but that would start to get tedious, right? Because if you think about what you're doing, what are you doing in the case of tic-tac-toe, all right? In the case of tic-tac-toe, when you click on a cell, here's the process that happens. First of all, you look to make sure that it was, it's empty, right? Because if it's not empty, you can't click on it again. So I can't, for example, take what was an O and turn it into an X, all right? So if there's something in there, I can't click on it again, all right? So first thing it does is it looks to make sure that it's empty. If it's empty, it sets the cell to either be the O or the X, depending on whose turn it is. And then it looks to see if someone is one or not. That's the general formula for when you click on a cell in a tic-tac-toe game. And that's the same for every cell. For each cell, I look to see, has it been clicked or not? If it has been clicked already, then no, that's not good. All right. If it has not been clicked, okay. If it's X's turn, I make it an X. If it's O's turn, I make it an O. And then I evaluate to see if the game has been, if the game is, is over. In other words, did someone win? Are there any cells that are left open? And so on. All right. So if I were to write nine listeners, I'd real quickly see that I have almost the exact same code in each. And that's the sign that says, well, yeah, it, 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 it wouldn't make sense, you know, to, to go in and refactor it. But you could, absolutely. Right. Now, in this case, what do we do? Well, in the spirit of keeping my event listener small, I don't have a lot of code in the listener. I simply tell it to make a move. All right? So, if you remember, this is simply saying if it's O's turn, then ignore X touching the screen. Because remember, X is a human player. So you can't try to like quick finger and pick two things while it's thinking. You probably couldn't anyhow, because it's going to react so quickly, but this makes sure that that doesn't happen. So if it's a computer's turn, then it ignores your touches. Okay? Now, if you do touch it, notice that the code here is next to nothing. All right? It's next to nothing. All it says is to go and make the move. All right? That make the move is another method that actually does the processing that I've described, and then we evaluate the board to see if the game's over, are all the cells filled, did someone win, and so on. Now, when I call that method, I give it the argument that the on-click event got called with, and I cast it to an image. So now, this method, make move, has in it Oh, it's down here. Has in it the code. And what is the code? Well, first thing it does is it looks to see if that image is pointing at the none image. In other words, it's open. All right? If it's not open, then it exits and it returns a false. And it does not switch the turn. So let's follow this logic through here. If it's my turn to play, and O picked the center cell, 
if I keep hitting that center cell, it's going to call this method, it's going to see that that center cell is not available, its drawable is not the none drawable, its drawable is the O, so therefore it's never going to execute this code and it's going to return false. So it never switches over to say now it's O's turn. Okay, now it never switches over to say it's O's turn. So it will sit there. If I finally get tired of hitting the same thing over and over again and having it return a false and I hit an open cell, then it looks to see whose turn it is. If it's X's turn, it sets that image to the X and sets the tag to the X. The tag is simply a more straightforward way of testing to see if, it, if it's an X or an O or nothing. All right. Um, otherwise, it sets the image to an O. In either case, it flips whose turn it is by multiplying it by negative 1. So it bounces between negative 1 and 0, or negative 1 and 1. All right. Each trip through and a move is made, it changes it to negative 1. And then finally, I return whether a move has been made or not. And so it can continue. And then if the move was made, then I evaluate board. All right. So in this case, I am not, I do not have any if statement, really. I sort of do, but I sort of don't, right? Because I'm actually using that view argument, and I'm manipulating that view argument. I'm not looking to see, I'm not looking to see was the one that was picked the top left, was the one that was picked the top center, was the one that picked the top right. I just know that whichever one was picked, I'm going to apply this logic to. Yes? Yes, you could. Yes. In fact, let's, let's look that up. Yep. Android get ID of view. So, alternately, I could have code like this. Let's imagine instead of that being ID, it, 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 it's, my, it's my view object. I could say, give me the ID, which is an integer, and get it from the views get ID method. So there's a get ID method. That is going to tell me which, that's going to give me the value of the ID. Then I can compare with all the IDs that are set here. So in the tic-tac-toe example, Okay, in my tic-tac-toe example, I could write the code to look like this. And let me go in and to text edit and do this. I'll put it in a, in a separate. All right, I'm going to get the ID of the view that got clicked. Now that I know the, view, the ID of the view that got clicked, I could have an if statement that says if ID equals R dot ID
that cell zero zero. Repeat that, please. The IDs, yeah, the actual IDs are ints. And let me see if I can find them here. Yeah, in the R. Again, this is generated. Remember, you don't write this. This gets generated by compiled. But if I look at all these, here's all my IDs. All right? In other words, the thing that I called cell 00, zero the ID for it is this. All right? The thing that I called an ID of cell 01, that's the ID. So it effectively assigns a numeric, an integer ID, for every ID that I've defined. And in my code, I say r.id.name of the field. And in um, behind the scenes, the integer is used. Again, because those integers are generated and, and don't really make any sense otherwise. So yeah, if I had the same listener, the bottom line is if I had the same listener handling multiple things, I'd grab the ID of it and then I'd have an if statement that would evaluate to check the ID and make sure which one it was and depending on which one it was, I'd do a different thing. Now again, in the tic-tac-toe example, that doesn't really make sense because I'm effectively doing the same thing. But, for example, if you had an add or if you had a save button and a delete button on the same screen, if you click the save, it did a save. If you click the delete, it would, it would do the delete. That's two totally different things, depending on that. Um, you would have in your on-click event, you'd grab the ID, test the ID, and then branch out. Again, um, if you think this through, how do I want to say this? It makes sense to make your event listeners thin. That is, not have much code. The reason is, is because you're liable to use that again. So for example, make move image view, I use that same method for the computer making its move. For example, first computer move. I always hard code it to pick the center one. And I use the same make move method here that gets called when the user clicks on it. So the only difference is, is that in one case it's O's turn and the other case it's X's turn. But both of them use the common code of make move. Because making a move in tic-tac-toe is the same whether you're X or O, right? Just what you switch the, the cell to is either an X or an O, but the rest of it stays the same. All right? Now, to my dilemma of why I was not always winning, I only have code for, I only have a lot of code for the first two moves. The third move, if I can win or, if I can win or block, I'll take that option. Otherwise, I make a random move. And likewise with four. So I could probably make this better by writing some custom code that looked to see what the user had responded and looked to see what's available and, and, and set that up. But I didn't take that that far. And again, from a game perspective, well, that, that adds a little bit of game to it, right? As opposed to always losing. Again, what does this line do? This keeps me from touching it and taking a turn before, while, it's, while O is still thinking about it, while the computer is still thinking about it. And again, you probably can't click that quick, but just in case. 
What's this doing? Well, it's looking, it's calling to make move, it's trying to pick the thing that I've clicked, but the code in the make, view, make move first looks to make sure that the, the view has not already been chosen. And it will return a false surprise if it, if it has been chosen and it will turn a true otherwise. And then we evaluate the board. Other questions? Let me ask you folks this, all right? What would you want to do on Thursday? I realize that's an open-ended question, right? I certainly could cover, go on to the next topic, but again, I have the sense that it's not really beneficial to go on to the next topic until we've caught up a bit on some of these. So. I don't mind making it a work day and the people that have laptops can bring them in. I don't mind spending the first part of class doing like I did today, fielding your questions. All right. And I don't mind discussing a new topic, but I'm a little leery of that unless people are okay with that. So do we want to do that where you bring in either your code like on a USB drive and you can load it on mine if you have questions. Or if you bring your laptop, you could work on it um, and uh, I can deal with any questions you have. Do we want to do that on Thursday? Any, everyone else okay with that? Yeah. All right, that's what we'll do on Thursday then. All right, so if you have questions, we'll spend the first X minutes of class answering the questions and then um, we'll go on to um, um, just having work time and again if you don't have a laptop to bring in but you have some code questions accumulate your code questions bring in your code and, and I'll look at it there yes 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 um, well I think I have an option for your final exam the option is, is, and I'll have to consider how to do this. Uh, in the past, I've given like a larger programming assignment that you could work on collectively for the final. And I don't know what you folks think of that or not. But maybe that's something we could talk about on Thursday. All right. Um, if I were to have a final, it would be like, the quizzes only maybe a little bigger. All right. Um, you can almost tell how hard I think the programming assignments are based on how hard the tests are because the quizzes being easy is a reflection of the fact that I think that the programming assignments are hard. <laughs> All right. So if I think the programming assignments are easy, then I make the tests hard. You know. So it's almost like you know uh, an, an averaging out sort of thing. You know, if these are too hard, well, we'll make the quiz a little too easy and go from there. Yes? You will never see me give a, quest, a, a test like that. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to question why he does it. He has, he, he has his reasons and, you know, he's a good teacher, so, you know, yeah. Um, but, yeah. I would, I would never give that. That does have the advantage. Is, is it multiple choice? Yeah, yeah, well, you can, yeah, and, 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 and it's easy to grade, and then I don't have to sit there till 1.30 in the morning like I was Sunday night trying to grade stuff. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And the idea for some of those is if you throw enough questions that you ought to know at someone, like you said, like you said, you don't have to be perfect, but it averages out. Like if there's just one thing that you just didn't get, well, if you miss one out of 200, you're still in pretty good shape. Yeah. Um, 
likewise, if uh, the other thing too is, is if, if you, what was that? Oh, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, the, the other thing is that if you have to agonize over every question, then, then you're not going to get through 200. And that's even what they do on standardized tests, right? You know, um, if everyone finished all the sections of the ACT, it would be harder to gauge than the fact that maybe the sharpest, you know, the, the kids that do really well on the test finish and maybe some of the other average students maybe don't quite make it all the way through. If everyone breathes through it, then it would not differentiate between the, the high scores and the, the medium scores. So I don't like multiple choice tests uh, because I, I found too often that someone can pick the wrong choice and no more than someone that picked the right choice. Someone that picked the right choice just it stuck in their memory or they guessed or whatever. Whereas someone who's really smart and who's really thinking outside the box maybe will have a pretty clever way of why they chose the wrong answer, but it just looks like a wrong answer to me, right? Uh, I, I don't get any sense of like, did they say this because they're maybe reading too much into the question or they don't have a clue, <laughs> right? Either one could be. So that's why I prefer to get short answers. That way, even if you say something a little bit wrong, I can say, well, all right, you're not right, but your reasoning shows that you do have some level of understanding for it. So, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Other questions? Trust me, folks, I know this is hard. So, th th you know, I, I can't say that enough. And it's not that I'm a mean person and I'm enjoying making you struggle. But the idea is, is that, y you know, every one of you that is, have, have gone in and have done some of these, you've done some tough programming. You've done some tough things. So even if you haven't, even if you're not up to date on that, you know, you've made some great progress and all that, and, and I'll do whatever I can to help you get over the hump and make it to the end of the course intact. Yes? If we have time for Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I'll tell you. Um, email me your thoughts on what you would like to see. Animation would be a good one. And, and Right. Okay. Oh. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, yes, we can. We can at least begin to address that. Um, some of that is the stuff that I look at in and, uh, advanced Android. But uh, again, if you would believe me, by the time I make my car, make it to my car, I forget what class I taught today. So, uh, if you would email me these topics, that would that would be beneficial. Because, yeah, if I, 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 unfortunately, I'm at that age where if I don't write it down immediately, it's, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the old, well, it, yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's, it may not even be age. It may be just that, you know, if you have a lot of other things on your mind, you know, it, it's tough to remember. You know, like when you walk in the kitchen and you don't know what you went in there for. <laughs> well, yeah, in my case, I, I know I'm probably going for a slice of pizza, right? But like it, other times when I go into other rooms, let's say, then it's let's. Oh, my mind, I saw the announcement that there's no. Yes. So that in theory, the uh, Android version of the Right. Your, your database one? Yeah. Yeah.
All right, let, let's actually pull up some actual dates here because I'm getting confused. Yeah, this is something Nora had had. And I never, I never changed the home page from that. And for the longest time, I was logged in as him. And I would go, and, hello, Paul, and, you know, and all that. And I think it's just sort of like a personalized news thing. I, uh, I ran into someone the other day that had a Netscape um, uh, uh, email address. And I thought, that's kind of like OG, right? I mean, that's kind of <laughs> cool that you got a Netscape email address. It's like, I got to give you, gotta give you your, your props on that one. Yeah, right, right. Maybe. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, the design was due the November 6th, and the actual uh, assignment was due this Friday. So, I mean, Given there will be nothing due on the 20th, then the next assignment at the earliest will be due the 27th. So that gives you like an extra week in there to catch up, polish up, whatever. Other questions? All right. That's all I have for today. We'll see you on Thursday. Thursday will be a work slash question day. And remind me to talk about the final. Email me special topics because I can prepare some lectures on those. Um, and you had mentioned before about like more general like career sort of advice or, or whatever. You know, that would be a good topic to talk about if no one has any other questions. Did they? Uh, <laughs> Must be that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This is a point of the semester where I like to do that at least a few times in every class. So, um, yeah, I guess it is. I, I had forgotten I'd done. I, had, you know, and then. And it, Oh. So I started doing it last week and I got about halfway through it and I Okay. I I I I I guess I misspoke then or I wasn't thinking or something. Well it should have been when you do rock, paper, scissors, um, encode and then you do rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. 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 Yeah.